Hello, my name is Bernali Dixon. I am with University of South Florida, St. Petersburg. Today I'm going to talk about our project that is funded by NSF Smart and Connected Communities Program. We refer to this project as Chris Hazard. This project aims to predict flood hazard in near real time using crowdsourced data and innovative community-based approach. Overall goal of this project is to promote community-based data-driven informed advocacy so we can move away from one-size-fits-all policy to a custom solution framework. While every community will be impacted by extreme weather events, the ability to cope with the event varies from community to community. Communities are unique and their needs are diverse. The picture on the upper left shows biophysically vulnerable community due to proximity to water. These affluent communities can experience storm surge and coastal flooding. If you live in a biplane community, you can fly away before the storm comes. The picture on the lower left shows a community that is not biophysically vulnerable due to proximity to water. But this community can experience flooding due to poor maintenance of the infrastructure. And these communities are also socioeconomically vulnerable. This community members may not have money to evacuate to a nearby hotel. The picture on the right shows an example of a typical flyer used during hurricane season. But this is not inclusive. If you don't have a car, you cannot fill in gas as the flyer asks you to do. There are many communities that do not have adequate vehicle ownership. Further, many communities do not use banking systems. Instead, they use payday advance kind of services. Therefore, these communities cannot access ATM, get cash as proposed in this flyer. The map on the left shows biophysical vulnerability. As you can see, communities like Shore Acres and Bahama Shores will be completely inundated with storm surge during hurricane, even with a category one hurricane. Whereas Lilman and Child's Park are communities that are not biophysically vulnerable. However, they are socioeconomically vulnerable. The integration framework of Chris Hazard is diverse and multifaceted. Traditional flood model, as well as social media based flood model will be used with Chris Hazard platform for near real time modeling of flood. Further, this model predictions will be verified using static camera based data, as well as citizen supplied crowdsourced data. They can upload really easily using the platform. We will conduct uncertainty analysis, both for data as well as model for this project. Pinellas County is ranked in, as number sixth amongst the top 10 counties in the nation, where largest percentage of the total population are at risk of being impacted by local high tide. The picture on the top shows King Tide is flooding streets of Pinellas County. The two images on the bottom shows flooded streets following a tropical storm. There is no point in telling people by using a complicated AI-based flood model to tell them that their backyard floods. They already know that. However, we can develop a framework that can help us cultivate this knowledge, harvest this knowledge from the community to identify the problem, to fine tune the problems, and that can be very beneficial. In an ideal world, science will guide policy formulation. The ideal path is indicated in red, but we all know this does not work. Translation of science into policy is a messy and a complex process. It has to meet the economic 
and technological feasibility. It has to also be in the consciousness of the public, as well as we have to consider decision-making levels. The actual route of translation of science to policy is complex, as indicated via blue line. It includes public awareness, problem perception, as well as willingness to and ability to participate in governance. We are all aware of the citizen science approach, but we want to develop a community engagement framework that is far more expansive and includes citizens at every step. We call this harvesting community knowledge or HCK. There are fundamental differences between HCK and citizen science approach. For citizen science, the projects are generally developed by the researchers and the research findings may or may not lead to policy solutions and may or may not benefit the communities. For HCK approach, while initial project scope is determined by the researchers, they are fine-tuned in collaboration with the communities and decision makers are involved at every step to guide us about feasibility of the solutions that community wants and researchers are proposing. Research findings must lead to policy solution and also research findings must benefit communities. We hope the development and use of HCK framework will help us gather knowledge from the community about the problem and work with the decision makers that will lead us to customization of information and resource allocation. Thus, we can move away from one size fits all approach to a custom policy approach. This complicated diagram shows the overall approach and the scope of our project. The ultimate goal of our project is to enhance understanding and mitigating social and biophysical vulnerability to flooding by connecting people to decision makers and using Chris Hazard as a platform to do so. Thank you very much.